Welcome to the Philippine Motor Show. This is Autofocus. I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. Here's a menu of some of our features on this edition of your electronic magazine, exclusive to the automobile and its industry. Starting off with reviews of two vehicle models presently in the local market. A compact MPV from Maxxis, the G50 1.5 Premium Automatic, and a subcompact SUV from Hyundai, the Kona GLS. Plus, a feature-to-feature -feature comparison of two seven-seater vehicles the Mitsubishi Xpander Cross, and the Suzuki XL7 GLX. On Autopedia, we'll talk about understanding your car's handling, and together with the latest news and developments in the local auto industry, we shall have the launch of the Mercedes-Benz GLA as our special feature. The next 60 minutes is all about the automobile. This is Autofocus, and we'll be right back after this short break. Voting for the next Automobile of the Year is extended. To be part of the 2020-2021 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, the only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. Just log on to bit.ly slash AFPCA2020. Vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2020 2021 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate standard and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until November 30, 2020. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Who will win? You choose, you decide. Vote now. What do we go for? We go for experience. We go for excitement. We go for sport. We go for style. We go for fun. We go for the new Toyota WeGo. Welcome back to Auto Focus, the automobile show. We start this edition of your electronic magazine with a review of one of the latest automobile models from Maxxis. In choosing an MPV for the family, will one more extra seat make a difference? Carview takes a look at one 8-seater compact MPV competing among a slew of 7-seaters. Maxxis Philippines has brought in the G50, a compact eight-seater MPV, to compete in a segment made up mostly of seven-seaters. The G50 arrived in variants, the top-end 1.5 Premium, the middle-priced 1.5 Elite, and the 1.5 Pro. At 4,825 millimeters long, 1,825 millimeters wide, and 1,800 millimeters tall with roof rails, and 1,778 millimeters without. The G50 in size, basic box, and bonnet configuration, design and styling is your classic modern compact multi-purpose vehicle. Focusing on the premium variant that we have, modern touches include the sharp creases, swept back LED headlights in the premium variant, daylight running lights, rear spoiler, rear windows defogger, power adjustable side mirrors, and best spoke 17 inch alloy wheels. A largish grille with horizontal slats and the Max's name, all in chrome, lend the G50 a strong presence on the road. 
the premium gets a panoramic sunroof, as well as roof rails. Maxxis has also filled the G50 variants it brought here with lots of smart technologies for convenience, performance, and safety. All three variants have keyless entry with push start system. Inside the G50 1.5 Premium is a roomy and comfortable cabin for driver and seven passengers with leather seats. All variants share a multifunction steering wheel with controls for such things as the audio system as well as cruise control. The G50 Premium as well as the Elite, perhaps has the largest touchscreen for the infotainment system in its segment, a 12.3 inch display. The system features two USB ports, Bluetooth connectivity, and six speakers. Only the premium variant has mobile wireless charging. There's also an air conditioning system with automatic controls and rear aircon vents. Another cool feature in the premium is the power tailgate. MPVs need to have a powertrain that provides a good balance of performance and fuel efficiency, as well as a comfortable and stable ride. Underneath the hood of the G50 is 1,490cc four-cylinder turbocharged and intercooled gasoline engine that generates 169 PS at 5,500 revolutions per minute and 250 newton meters of torque from 1,700 to 4,300 RPM. The engine is mated to a 7-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission that sends power to the front wheels. Stopping power comes from a brake system that uses solid discs on all wheels. The G50 suspension system features front independent McPherson struts and torsion beams in the rear. Maxxis has installed active and passive safety features in the G50 with the premium getting more than the Elite and the Pro. All G50 variants come with driver and front passenger airbags, with the premium getting additional front side airbags, three-point seat belts for eight, ISOFIX anchors. All three also have electronic parking brake with auto hold, emergency brake assist, hill hold control, electronic stabilization program, tire pressure monitoring system, and a mobilizer. Parking sensors and reverse camera are standard in G50 variants, but only the Premium and the Elite have 360-degree views and both front and rear sensors. The G50 ticks off all the boxes that define a compact MPV and Maxxis goes the extra mile with more features to make the total package more appealing. An eight-seater with a lot of trendy features, the G50 is worth a look and test drive for those seeking to buy a compact MPV. The latest auto industry news and developments, right after this break. What do we go for? We go for experience. We go for excitement. We go for sport. We go for style. We go for fun. We go for the new Toyota WeGo.
Welcome back to Auto Focus, and we now have the latest auto industry news. 30 years ago, Honda Cars Philippines set up its shop in the country. The first model it brought into the country was the fourth generation Honda Civic, which then became the dream car of that decade. Over three decades, Honda sold 131,067 Civics, as well as a host of what it now calls the legacy models, the Accord, the CRV, and the City. In recent years, Honda brought in innovative models like the Mobilio and the BRV, as well as the iconic sporty sedans like the Civic Type R, meticulously designed and crafted to look and feel like a premium sports car with a powerful engine and bolstered by innovative technological features that ensure a smooth, comfortable, and enjoyable ride. As part of its celebration of 30 years of successful operating in the country, Honda is offering a hefty 180,000 peso discount for the Civic Type R. Also, this month of October, Honda hosted a small but intimate online gathering of media friends and partners to commemorate its 30 years in the country as well as to finally formally introduce Masahiko Nakamura as Honda Cars Philippines President. The company also launched the 30th Anniversary Commemorative Book to celebrate and honor its many achievements and milestones. And before the month is over, Honda will roll out two of its latest models. The class champions of national finals of the GR Supra GT Cup Asia Philippines, Terence Llave, Lance Padilla, and Jose Luis Altoveros, were formally introduced as members of the Philippine team to compete at the regional finals of the GR Supra GT Cup Asia on October 25. The introduction was held during the awarding ceremony of winners of the first e-motorsports competition held by Toyota Motor Philippines. Llave, Lance Padilla, and Altoveros will be competing against 12 national champions from India, Malaysia, Singapore, and Thailand on virtual tracks of PlayStation's Gran Turismo Sport. The three are now training for the coming competition with the help of TMP and Tuazon Racing, its official e-motorsport partner for the GR Supra GT Cup Asia Philippines. TMP tapped PLDT Enterprise to be the official connectivity partner of Team Philippines to ensure fast, seamless, and lag-free internet connection during training and the tournament. I think we have a good chance of placing well in the regional finals. We have a strong lineup of drivers. We will prepare the drivers and with a bit of luck in the race, possibly get a podium position," said J.P. Tuazon, president of Tuazon Racing. <music> Offering hard-to-resist deals for its lineup of luxury vehicles this October is Mercedes-Benz Philippines. Mercedes-Benz calls this an October feast of deals from 0% interest rates, low monthly amortization, low down payment, to cash discounts, which also come packed with freebies. Buyers can have a brand new C-Class Benz for as low as 2.99 million pesos, an E-Class for 3.59 million, and a V-Class for 4.19 million. You can find out more of these deals at Mercedes-Benz showrooms on Edsa Greenhills, Bonifacio Global City, Alabang, and Cebu City. Those are the latest news and developments in the automotive industry. We shall take another short break. Stay with us. I'll be right back. What do we go for? We go for experience. We go for excitement. We go for sport. We go for style. We go for fun. We go for the new Toyota WeGo. 
voting for the next Automobile of the Year is extended. To be part of the 2020-2021 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, the only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. Just log on to bit.ly slash AFPCA 2020. Vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2020-2021 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate standard and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until November 30, 2020. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Who will win? You choose, you decide. Vote now. Welcome back to this edition of Autofocus, the country's premier automobile TV and online magazine. Here's our feature-to-feature -feature comparison of the latest automobile models belong to the same category on head-to-head. -head. Seven-seater SUVs and MPVs are much sought after by Filipino families especially those with two children and counting. Families need the space and versatility of vehicles that feel comfortable and secure in both urban and countryside settings. Two seven-seater options are the Mitsubishi Expander Cross and the Suzuki XL7 GLX. The Mitsubishi Expander Cross and the Suzuki XL7 GLX may have started out as MPV or multi-purpose vehicles, but through the magic of cladding, aero kits, and suspension upgrades are now being sold as SUVs. This is especially true for the Expander Cross, which thanks to cladding and kit, redesigned grille and bumpers, and lifted suspension system, now stands at 4,500 millimeters long, 1,800 millimeters wide, and 1,750 millimeters tall, with 2,775 millimeter long wheelbase, and 225 millimeter ground clearance. It arrived with the redesigned grille and bumper, black fender arches, and side body moldings. Side and tailgate garnishes features LED headlamps, rear LED combination headlamps, new roof rails, and shark fin antenna. Adding to SUV aspirations are the 17-inch two-tone alloy wheels wrapped by 205x55R17 tires. The expander suspension system features front McPherson struts with coil spring and stabilizer and torsion beams in the rear. The Suzuki XL7 GLX fits into the subcompact SUV segment at 4,450 millimeters long, 1,775 millimeters wide, and 1,710 millimeters tall, and a 200 millimeter minimum ground clearance. It comes with a bold front grille, black wheel arches, roof rails, side protection moldings, front and rear bumpers with underside protectors, DRL looking like the sharp end of a katana. Rear combination lamps. The custom 16-inch alloy wheels wrapped by 195 by 60 R16 tires. The XL7 suspension system features McPherson struts with coil spring in front and torsion beams with coil springs in the rear. The Expander Cross is powered by a 4A91 1.5-liter inline-4 DOHC 16-valve engine with MyVec, which generates 104 PS at 6,000 revolutions per minute and 141 newton meters of torque at 4,000 RPM. 
the engine drives the front wheels via a four-speed automatic transmission. Under the hood of the Suzuki XL7 GLX is a 1,462cc four-cylinder gasoline engine with 16 valves and multi-point fuel injection that generates 103 horsepower at 6,000 revolutions per minute and 138 newton meters of torque. Power and torque is transmitted to the front wheels via four-speed automatic transmission. The Expander Cross has a roomy cabin for seven passengers on three rows of seats with two three two configuration. Seats are upholstered in two-tone leather. Second and third row seats that fold flat provide flexibility for hauling passengers and cargo. It comes with a lot of storage spaces for gear, gadgets, and beverage, power outlets in all three rows, and keyless operation system for entry and engine start, and white-lit high-contrast instrument cluster. The three-spoke steering wheel clad in leather with stitching, tilts and telescopes and comes with buttons and controls for audio, cruise control, among other functions. Infotainment comes from a two-din multimedia system with a 7-inch touchscreen with radio tuner, MP3 player, USB, auxiliary input, Bluetooth with mirror link feature for Android OS, an amber color display, and six speakers. The Suzuki XL7 can sit seven comfortably in fabric and PVC leather upholstered seats. The front seat slides and reclines. The driver's seat also adjusts for height. The second row seat split folds 60-40, slides and reclines, and has a one-touch control for easy access to the third row seat for two. The third row seat splits 50-50 and also reclines. The XL7 comes with keyless entry and push start system. The meter cluster on the dash has red accents for speedometer, tachometer, and the sub dials, and a 4.2 inch LCD that displays info such as driving g force, engine horsepower, and torque. Standard interior features include automatic air conditioning, central door locks, power windows, power adjustable and folding side view mirrors. The leather-covered D-shaped steering wheel with controls for audio and phone and that adjust for tilt. Also found in the XL7 are ventilated cup holders beneath center console, smartphone holders, auxiliary and USB portals on center console. Infotainment system comes from a 10-inch touchscreen that plays video and audio with Bluetooth and USB connectivity compatible with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay and is integrated with a rear parking camera. The Expander Cross comes with many of the standard auto safety features, including SRS airbags for driver and front seat passenger, three-point ELR seat belts for seven, with the driver and front seat passenger benefiting from pretensioners, and child seat ISO fix and tether anchors. Mitsubishi also adds driver assist technologies to the Expander Cross, such as active stability control, traction control, hill start assist, as well as the anti-lock brake system with electronic brake force distribution. The brake system uses 15-inch ventilated disc in front and rear 9-inch leading and trailing drums with a 10-inch master vacuum brake booster. Standard safety and security features on the Suzuki XL7 GLX are three-point ELR seat belts for six, a two-point seat belts for middle second row passenger, dual airbags, two ISOFIX child seat anchors, side impact door beams, door sensing security alarm, and engine immobilizer. The XL7 also comes with anti-lock brake system with electronic brake force distribution, electronic stability program, and hill hold control. The brake system uses front ventilated discs and leading trailing drums in the rear. There are a lot of good options for families looking for seven-seater MPVs 
or SUVs, or even crossovers. Both the Expander Cross and the Suzuki XL7, depending on budget, can be excellent choices. Be it fine dining, a romantic garden wedding, a relaxed casual meal, or an important business event, Illustrado is the place to go. Aside from its famed paella, the Illustrado restaurant, which is located within the history-laden walled city of Intramuros, is also the favorite destination of food gourmands for its famous calios and lengua and other classic gustatory offerings. Illustrado restaurant, only for the foodies. Motul is the most trusted motor oil of the top teams competing in some of the world's most grueling race competitions. The WRC, the WTCC, and the Japan GT. Motul is the only 100% fully synthetic motor oil in the market. It has antioxidation properties that prevent premature thickening and aging due to thermal stress and guarantees total engine protection. For more information about Motul engine oils, visit www.motul.com.ph Welcome back to Autofocus, the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine. Our special feature is next. Entry-level and Mercedes-Benz are words seldom heard together in the same sentence. But in the rarefied area of luxury SUV ownership, one has to enter the segment at some level. Mercedes-Benz Philippines has just brought what it calls an entry-level SUV, the GLA. Like all major and, yes, even minor, automotive marquees all across the globe, Mercedes-Benz has adapted to a world enamored by SUVs or sport utility vehicles. Mercedes-Benz has put the stamp of its brand of luxury on SUVs, which as a segment started out as vehicles preferred for their versatility. Perfectly comfortable roomy rides in the city and as a robust and fun vehicle for countryside adventures. As the popularity of SUVs grew, now outselling sedans in most countries, Mercedes-Benz has also grown in its lineup of SUVs. With more than a century's worth of experience and innovations in the automotive industry worldwide, Mercedes-Benz continues to innovate and build vehicles that impact people's lives around the globe. And considering the changing of times, its SUV lineup serves as one of the most powerful, most intelligent, and safest rosters ever built. It started with the legendary G-Class, the epitome of the Mercedes-Benz SUV, demonstrating sheer durability, many owned from generation to generation. Then there's the GLC, which set new benchmarks for comfort, luxury, performance, and design in the midsize SUV segment. Then came the GLE, 
which demonstrated Mercedes-Benz's engineering and state-of-art features for handling the toughest terrains while providing in-cabin comfort and convenience. The GLS arrived as an ultra-premium full-size SUV, manifesting elegance, a dominant stance, and cutting-edge technology. A recent arrival is the GLB, which Mercedes-Benz deems the most versatile seven-seater luxury compact SUV in the local market. Now comes the Mercedes-Benz GLA. And now, the latest addition to the lineup, the all-new GLA. It marks the completion of the Mercedes-Benz ever-impressive SUV family. The new GLA is even better in every aspect. It has added character, more space, advanced safety features, and more efficiency. It embodies the perfect synergy between pure beauty and robust off-road elements. The new GLA is the eighth model to join the lineup using what Mercedes-Benz calls modular front architecture and represents the entry level into the German luxury brand's successful family of SUV models. The GLA variant that arrived in the country is the GLA 200 AMG line with the AMG body styling highlighted by a diamond radiator grill with pins in chrome, 19 inch, five twin-spoke light alloy wheels, black roof liner, and polished aluminum roof rails. Inside the new GLA is more spacious and more luxurious, exemplified by the new generation multifunction sports steering wheel in Napa leather. The GLA is also equipped with Mercedes-Benz User Experience Multimedia System that comes with a seven-inch instrument and media display that supports the major applications and selected apps, including navigation, and is compatible with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The GLA 200 AMG line is powered by a turbocharged 1.3-liter four-cylinder engine that generates 163 horsepower and 250 newton meters of torque made it to a 7G dual-clutch automatic transmission that drives the front wheels. It also comes with Dynamic Select for Eco, Comfort, Sport, and Individual Drive Profiles, an Eco Start-Stop system for better fuel efficiency, and Mercedes-Benz Intelligent Drive, as well as Active Brake Assist, Attention Assist, Light Inside Package, Parking Package, Active Parking Assist Reversing Camera, and Tire Pressure Loss Warning System. The all-new GLA represents an exciting moment for Mercedes-Benz's most popular compact SUV. Sporty, agile, modern, and practical, it has remained a firm favorite for those who love sleek styling of an SUV but prefer a compact vehicle. The all-new GLA is here and at an introductory price of 3290000 It is available for viewing in all of our showrooms in Edsa Green Hills, Bonifacio Global City, Alabang, and Cebu City. Entry level may mean different things to people of different needs. And certainly, while one can see acquiring the GLA as a means to joining the fraternity of Mercedes-Benz owners, the other will see it as an aspirational SUV. Voting for the next Automobile of the Year is extended. To be part of the 2020 
2021 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, the only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. Just log on to bit.ly slash AFPCA 2020. Vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2020 2021 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate standard and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until November 30, 2020. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Who will win? You choose, you decide. Vote now. What do we go for? We go for experience. We go for excitement. We go for sport. We go for style. We go for fun. We go for the new Toyota WeGo. Welcome back. We have more cars for you to know and appreciate as we have our second car review this week. The Hyundai Kona was named the North America Utility Vehicle of the Year in 2019. Let's take a look at the variant of this South Korean subcompact SUV sold in our country, the Kona 2.0 GLS. The subcompact sport utility vehicle segment is one of the most crowded in the local auto market. Standing out in this segment is understandably difficult with more than a handful of contenders, all working to be competitive through design, performance, and price. Some are striking in design, others strong in performance, all with enticing and competitive pricing and promos. In this market comes the Hyundai Kona 2.0 GLS. The Kona arrives in the local market boasting the accolade North America Utility Vehicle of the Year 2019 for among other reasons, quote unquote, dynamic driving capabilities, safety features, a livable electric range, and a design that mesmerizes. The accolade is shared both by the Hyundai Kona powered by a combustion engine and the Hyundai Kona Electric. In this car review, we feature the Kona brought in to the local subcompact SUV market by Hyundai, the Kona 2.0 GLS 6 Automatic. Can the local Kona live up to the accolade attained by its brethren in North America? Let's pick out the specs of the Kona model we have and go from the outside in. The Kona takes up a space of about 4.165 meters long, 1.80 meters wide, and 1.55 meters high, with a ground clearance of 170 millimeters, all correctly within the parameters of a subcompact SUV. A longish front overhang, cradling a distinct honeycomb-like grille, flanked by a unique separated headlight design with narrow slits for turn and daytime running lights, above projector type headlights made for a fascia that mesmerizes while the Kona is parked on or rolling past on pavement. The distinctive Kona design cues, including black liners or support for exterior features, are carried over to the back, highlighted by a rear spoiler with high mount stop lights. The 215x55R17 tires wrapped around bespoke 17-inch alloy wheels provide proper sporty SUV stance. The Kona 2.0 GLS interior may not mesmerize as much as the exterior, but the cabin is comfortable with fabric upholstered front seats that slide and recline and rear seats that split back and fold 60-40. Standard are air conditioning trip computer, overhead console with sunglass holder, power windows, and side mirrors. For entertainment, there's an audio system with a floating type radio display with Bluetooth connectivity with controls on the steering wheel. The sound coming through six speakers and two tweeters. 
Another standard convenience feature is cruise control, which is great for long drives in expressways. Underneath the hood of the Kona available locally is a 2-liter, 4-cylinder NUMPI Atkinson engine that generates max 149 PS at 6,200 RPM and max torque of 18.3 kilograms per meter at 4,500 RPM and complies with the Euro 4 emission benchmarks. The power is transmitted to the front wheels via a six-speed automatic transmission that offers manual shifting modes and includes an override lock-up torque converter for higher fuel economy at highway speeds. Stopping power comes from ventilated front and solid rear brake discs. The Kona 2.0 GLS strikes a good balance between ride comfort and responsive handling through a well-tuned suspension system using front McPherson struts and rear coupled torsion beam axles. Finally, the Kona 2.0 GLS comes with a host of active and passive safety and security features that include smart key with button start, immobilizer, three-point emergency locking seat belts for the two front and rear passengers, plus a two-point ELR seat belt for middle passenger in the rear, dual front airbags, side airbags, curtain airbags, anti-lock braking system, and tire pressure monitoring system. The 2.0 Kana GLS 6 Automatic with its striking looks, promising performance, comfortable cabin sufficient interior amenities, ample safety features, comes at the price point of 1,188,000 pesos. The Hyundai Kona looks poised to cut a good size slice of the subcompact SUV pie in the local market. Here's hoping for the local auto industry's sake that many will partake of that pie. Know more about your car and how to take care of it here on Autopedia. Okay, now we're going to talk about handling. And by handling, I don't mean race car handling, which 99.99% of us will never do anyway. What we're going to be talking about is how the car handles normally on the road. So you can go to YouTube and then there are lots of videos explaining what camber is, what caster is, and all of this stuff. But what we're going to be talking about is a bit more practical. How to know if your car needs alignment or not. And how to check if the alignment shop did a proper and correct job after you have it aligned. So, so if they did a sucky job, you can always tell them that, hey, car's not aligned, it's a back job. The easiest test that anybody can do, actually, you do it unconsciously, you always have one hand on the wheel to keep the car going straight because, as you can see here, we're going to go straight. The second that you let go of the steering wheel, and we're about to crash into the Jeep. <laughs> that's how you know your car needs alignment. And that's also the test after you have your car have alignment done in the alignment shop, you let it go. If it tracks straight, then job's well done. If it doesn't, then back job. Actually for alignment, the biggest factor that they adjust to make the car go straight or not is toe in and toe out. <laughs> Not, not camber per se. Camber relates more to how the car turns, which we'll explain in a bit. We're going to explain the terms with actual wheels rather than a diagram because having actual stuff is a lot easier to visualize. The most common that you hear is camber alignment. That simply means labas o pasok yung wheel. So this is negative camber. This is positive camber. Almost all cars now don't have positive camber anymore. A lot of the cars now, when you buy it stock, straight from the factory, have a very, very slight negative camber, both on the front and in the back. Why they do this? Because when you have a car that's negatively cambered and then when you corner, the wheels actually straighten out. So we're gonna exaggerate it a bit. So you have a car that says negative camber like this. When you corner, weight shifts out, the wheel gets straighter, so there's more grip on the road. 
And when you turn the other way, the same thing happens. Weight is on this wheel, this wheel gets straighter. So there's more grip on this one. So that's what camber is. The next question is, hindi ba mapuputput yung gulong ko dahil naka negative camber ako? The answer is no. <laughs> the amount of camber is very, very slight. Usually, a degree is a lot. So it's anywhere from half a degree to one degree. That's the stock setting of, of almost all cars now. Uh, there are some rare cars like Mazda 3s have about a degree and a half, sometimes two degrees of negative camber at the back. And by the way, that's what makes the car handle so well because of that extreme negative camber at the back. If you hear and hang around with car people often enough, you'll hear na napuput put yung loob ng gulong ko. It's because of if you have too much negative camber like this, only this part is on the ground. This part here does not rub the ground. So the end result is you get inside tire wear, which means it's napuput put sa loob, sa loob. And since you're a cheapskate, you rotate mo na lang yung goma para maputput naman yung labas. <laughs> but as we showed earlier, if your car goes straight or not when you let go of the steering wheel, a lot of it has to do with toe in and toe out. And then for this one, we need to have a shot from above the tire. <laughs> this is toe in. This is toe out. Again, the stock setting is almost always slightly, slightly towed in from the factory. And it's pretty easy to see. If you have an old uh, Transformers toy that with one wheel wobbled like that, obviously it will not go straight. If it's wobbled like this, it will also not go straight. If it's straight like this, with very, very slightly pointing inward, then this will actually go straight when you roll it. Having the opposite of like that, this will also go straight, but it will be very wiggly. So most of the adjustments when you're having a car aligned to go straight is actually the toe in and toe out. The third term that you will hear is caster alignment. Uh, most of the cars now, we don't really adjust this anymore because there's not much to adjust and adjusting it doesn't really affect anything unless you're racing. So let's forget about that one. So the two important things to remember are toe in, toe out, and then camber alignment for tire wear. But once again, the best test, if your alignment job is great or not, let go of the steering wheel. That advice also same goes for people who install lowering springs. They always ask, do you need an alignment after you install lowering springs or any other suspension work? Same principle goes. Let go of the steering wheel. If your car go runs straight, you don't need an alignment. If it veers left and right at Kumakabig, then you need an alignment. That's how handling is done for us normal people 99.99% of the time and that's all what we need to be concerned about. Yes, you can have lowering springs, better shock absorbers, but the thing is for normal people driving on normal roads, handling is how straight your car goes. And when you ask it to turn, and it turns and it's not malikot, it's not all over the road. That is handling for the common person. <laughs> That's our feature on Autopedia this week. Taking care of your ride has been made easier. And that's Autofocus this week. We hope you have found this edition of your Automobile Electronic Magazine informative as well as entertaining. You can also check us out on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. On behalf of my dad, Butch Gamboa, this has been your host, Ray Louis Gamboa. Please stay safe and healthy.